We are midway through the year and we have had a lot of opportunities to shoot a lot of different ARs and send a lot of rounds down range with them and get our hands on them. But with that being said, which ones are my favorite? Let's go ahead and hop into the top five ARs of 2023. Welcome back everybody, Clint today with Classic Firearms, here to hurt some feelings and stir the pot a little bit because we're going to be debating, well you guys are going to be debating down in the comment section, the top 5 AR-15 rifles for 2023. We did see uh, quite a bit of releases earlier this year at SHOT Show, saw some releases last year and things are finally starting to hit the shelves this year, so we're here to talk about, like I said, the top 5 with probably a few, perhaps three, honorable mentions. And just keep in mind, these rifles we're about to talk about are probably the best, the best, let's just say, right? For the price and all the features you get, more features are gonna equal more money, so take that for what you will. And let's go ahead and talk about my number five pick, the BCM Recce 16 with that Mark II upper receiver. This guy is ultimately at the bottom of the list because of one really, really big thing. It is 2023 and it does not feature an ambidextrous bolt release. Take that for what you will or magazine release. So that is the only reason it's not closer to the top of the list. But I will say this, there's a big but here. Number five for a reason. Other than that though, it is probably one of the most reliable, proven and affordable rifles on this list. Everything that BCM has to offer has been just over time proven to be exactly what you want it to be. Accurate, reliable, trustworthy, and the list goes on. The, the furniture that is utilized on this rifle, it's always been ergonomic. BCM just makes great accessories as it is. They've always collaborated with Travis Haley, who's made some awesome, cool contributions to the series. So I am really happy about the BCM Recce 16. They also make the Recce 14 if you want something just a tad bit shorter. So check that out. But ultimately, I'm really satisfied with BCM. We have actually featured a Recce 16 on the channel before for something that you would probably find over at cfcontest.com. So make sure you're going over there and checking that out. But if you'd like to see BCM featured a little bit more on the channel, let us know down in the comment sections below. Now, with that being said, the Mark II upper and why I specified that upper receiver is though it's gonna cost you a little bit more money, they did some things to make this a little bit more durable. They actually collaborated with Larry Vickers on this and it's a little bit more rigid. They wanna make sure that there's no barrel sway or barrel drift. <clears throat> and they wanna make sure too that over time, this is gonna maintain its durability and if you have well, locking lugs that aren't exactly aligned because the barrel's doing some weird shifting or something like that, that could actually, well, how do you say enhance or not enhance, but I guess expedite uh, wear, which isn't something you want. Also, and machined into the upper receiver right next to the charging, charging handle port is actually ventilation systems for gas coming back into the system to direct that away from the shooter. So if you're shooting suppressed, you got more gases coming back through, you don't have one of those high fancy flow through silencers, well, now you don't have to worry about it as much because BCM is actually machined into the upper receiver, those ventilation systems or ventilation ports away from the shooter. You're welcome, thanks BCM, that's awesome. Now just add ambidextrous controls and you might find yourself at number four. And going from one of the more affordable options to my number four pick, which is gonna probably be the most expensive option on the list, is the Radian Mod 1. This gun ultimately is everything you could probably ask for when it comes to an AR-15. And with a price range above $3,000, it should be. Uh, the BCM that I just talked about came in in a ballpark around between sixteen to eighteen hundred dollars, depending. So, not cheap either, but a lot more affordable than the Radian I'm talking about right now, which is why it's a little bit lower on my list. But you know what? It does have ambidextrous controls. Now, that's not to say that every rifle we feature or talk about or that you find with ambi controls is gonna be that expensive. Thank you, LWRC, uh, spoiler alert. But I am just gonna go ahead and tell you right now, everything else that Radian puts into this gun makes the price a little bit more understandable and justified, but let me know down in the comment section below, is that price 
justifiable for something that does feature the ADAC lower, which is the ambidextrous dual action control lower. This is 7075 T6 materials that does feature, well, like I said, a left hand mag release and a right hand bolt release and bolt catch, which I think is a lot of fun. And it's also very intuitive. It's also the same lower receiver that we featured on our AR build series where I built out my dream AR-15 and then had to no longer have it here because it was featured somewhere like cfcontest.com. So that hurt, but I will say this, the ADAC lower that Radian has to offer is phenomenal. The upper receiver made out of the same material, 7075 T6, phenomenal. The looks, everything about it, it just, it's a great gun. But again, is that price point justifiable? Let me know down in the comments section. It does feature all of Radian's awesome accessories as well, such as the Raptor SD charging handle, which is, uh, it's specifically for suppression. So it does have that ventilation and everything built into the charging handle itself, which by the way, if you wanna see the best charging handle for shooting suppressed, we have that video. Go check that out because we test a lot of them. Good job, Geisley. All right, so continuing on with that, you get, again, everything that you could ever ask for. Modularity, you get as far as the M-Lock rail goes and so on and so forth, different mounting systems as far as a muzzle device. Again, just overall a great gun. Talking more about the controls, the ambidextrous safety, those Radian Raptor, or the, the Radian Talons, I should say. They're fantastic. They're also, well, user configurable. If you want it to be full 90 degrees or 45 degrees, you can actually, I'll set them up to be either or, which is pretty cool. So if you want that short throw, you got it, right? So again, Radian in the Mod 1, number four, because it is so dang expensive, but at the end of the day, that money is buying everything that I could ever ask for in my gun. Only if it came with all the optics and all the other accessories that I'm gonna spend thousands of dollars on as well. Let's talk about my number three. My number three pick, this one was difficult. It had to pretty much compete with obviously number two and number one as they all do, but three, two, and one are all very similar, kind of, with quality and everything else, but there's just something here, something there that really makes up my mind. And the reason this gun is at number three is because, well, I just don't have as much experience with it, which is really odd because it's Daniel Defense and the R3. This is actually the M4A1 that doesn't have what? Ambidextrous controls, because why? They haven't sent us an R3 yet. That's why it's so low, Frank. I know you're watching. Anyway, I will say this, however. For the price point around $2,300, you are getting what is arguably probably the most sturdy lockup system for a rail. The new R3 rail from Dana Defense is fantastic. It's the exact same thing as the Riz 2, but M-Lock, which also means it's lighter, which also means you have more, I guess, modularity when it comes to a lot of the modern accessories today that are m lock granted picatinny is solid obviously it's not going anywhere it's proven but you do have now again what i am considering probably the most trustworthy rugged durable lockup system for a rail to a standard ar upper and yes the daniel defense quality which you guys know i'm a big fan of but i haven't shot any r3s yet with that ambi control so Cool fact, <laughs> cool feature is of course, as I've already talked about, the ambidextrous controls, which if I had an R3 would be right up here, there'd be a bolt release slash bolt catch. And then on the opposite side, there'd be a magazine release, but I do have a cool looking M4A1 though with the Trijicon VCOG on it. So that's neat. But anyway, with that being said, number three, Dana Defense R3 M4 or the DD4 R3. They also make the Mark 18, the 11.5. They have uh, the, I do believe that they're coming out with a longer barreled one as well, like the Mark 12. But again, you have the option to throw on that R3 rail, so you can't go wrong with that. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about that. Let's go ahead and roll into my number two pick. My number two is the American Defense Manufacturing Universal Individual Carbine UIC Mod 2. This guy, lightweight, we put a lot of rounds through it. And the fact that it is a 13.9 inch barrel that comes pinned and weld with a Surefire War Comp makes me very, very happy. It's kind of like, wow, they did something other than a basic ass A2. And that excites me because a lot of us are throwing suppressors on our guns. And I'm sure if I were to contact ADM and say, hey, could you actually throw it on a Huxworks or something else? I'm sure they would. So very cool for them to do that. Now, the reason that the ADM the UIC Mod 2 is on, so high on my list is one, the price is good. 
for what you're getting. Secondly, it's a billet lower, it's nice and lightweight, and secondly, this probably has the most intuitive, ergonomic, ambidextrous controls there are. We've featured this gun a lot in video and have run the crap out of this thing. I mean, <laughs> look at the muzzle device. A lot of the times, if not most of the time, suppressed. And so, what I want to show you guys is again, really incognito, out of the way, but super easy to actuate is the ambi bolt catch release that you see right here. If I wanna lock it to the rear, pull back, push up, and it's locked to the rear. Very subtle, very easy. Send the bolt home, feel for it, push down, and as you can tell, it is easy to do so, which is very, very nice. Some of these ambi controls, none of which that I've talked about thus far, uh, are really, really like stiff. And no, though I haven't had the opportunity to really run the R3 from Daniel, I have actually been able to play with one and it's not super stiff. Easy enough, right? Cool. <laughs> so there you have it. Magazine release, also super easy to actuate. Right back here, boom. You'll also notice there's a block for the magazine release because one thing that ADM has taken into consideration is, well, maybe if you've got this thing slung up close to your kit, you don't want your spare mags or whatever else you got going on in your chest rig to knock the magazine release. So it needs to have enough stiffness to it or be a, a firm push so that way it's not accidentally popping out. But at the end of the day, this thing just runs so well. And it also has one of those ratcheting castle nuts as well. You don't have to stake it or anything. It just locks itself in place, which is pretty cool. Backplate includes the QD mount for a sling, basic mag pull grip, no big deal there. Ambi safety also with a Radian ADM logoed Raptor charging handle. So everything about this gun is just sweet. Also take a look at that lower receiver. It looks freaking good. I mean. They did a really good job with this gun, and that's why it's sitting so high up on my list, but it didn't exactly make number one, so I'm sure you guys are eager to get to that. But with that being said, there are quite a few guns that deserve a shout out, right? One of which, if you're looking for something very budget friendly, but is hitting everything that I want for, minus the ambidextrous controls, take a look at the IWI Zion. I know I've talked about it plenty of times, but that is one that I would definitely take a look at. And arguably one of the most well, definitely probably the most accurate AR-15 that I've shot thus far, US Arms Co. The Champion Rifle. This thing is sick. If you're looking for a long distance shooter, this is where it's at. Now, one thing I can tell you that I've never seen before on any other type of AR-15 is this little lever that you see right here that is very stiff, but what that allows you to do is to actually lock and mate the upper receiver to the lower receiver so there is no wiggle. This is the tightest lockup I have ever felt on an AR-15 before. If you take a look at like my service M16, you can rattle the upper and lower and see right through that thing. But this right here is super tight. When we spoke with Josh from US Arms Co, he said just from the wobble between the upper and lower receiver alone can cost you four MOA accuracy. It's kind of a big deal. So the US Arms Co champion rifle for something if you're going for that distance engagement, right? The other one I wanna talk about is another one that I have yet to get my hands on, but our buddy Alec, who used to be a part of the channel and has gone off and started his own business, we miss you. He mentioned BG Defense a while back and I've done more research about that company. That's another one I think I wanna get my hands on. Let me know down in the comments section if you'd like to see more from them. And the last one I'm gonna talk about is one that's not technically available to the civilian market just yet, yet. But when we weren't kicked out of Knight's Armament booth at SHOT Show this year, they did take us behind the scenes and showed us the KS-1 rifle. Anyway, rolling in to number one. No, my number one is not LMT. That's only because of an experience thing, which hopefully it changes soon, right? But I can tell you right now that what is my number one is the LWRC ICDI M6IC. There's a lot of different names, but just know it's the LWRCI direct impingement rifle. This is one that's dead, I mean, it's decked out the way it is because it's gonna be featured at cfcontest.com. Right, Ryan? No. Okay, this is Ryan's personal, he won't let that happen. But anyway, let me just go ahead and tell you the reason why that this is on the list as my number one for the second consecutive year. Um, oh, the price point and all the features that you get. This features, again, some excellent ambidextrous controls. Let's go ahead and take a look. Well, pop the mag out. Notice what I was talking about before with the ADM. 
This has got some nice raised materials on the lower receiver to actually keep you from accidentally pressing that mag release. However, when you are ready to press it, it is a simple and intuitive mag release reminiscent of the ADM. Solid job there. I like it a lot. As far as the bolt release catch goes on the right hand side, again, it's out of the way so you're not going to be accidentally manipulating it, but whenever it is time to manipulate it, it's also very easy to do. Locking to the rear, notice how much that bolt release sticks out. And yes, it's just like the bolt release on your standard AR-15 on the left hand side of the gun, so it's going to feel familiar. Sending the bolt home, easy to do. It's very ergonomic. What about locking it? Very easy. Like it looks like you're not doing much of anything until it's time to lock it to the rear. Excellent job by LWRCI when it comes to their DI gun. Now here's where things get a little bit more interesting. Remember how I was talking about the lockup on the Daniel Defense RIS-2 R3 rails? Well, this one has something a little bit different. It is a proprietary locking up system or lockup system, which pros and cons to that, right? Pros. This utilizes what's called a monoforged design. That means that this part, which is right here, just forward of the upper receiver, well, a part of the upper receiver, is reinforced a lot. And that makes sense because this is where all those pressures are taking place. This is where that small explosion is set off to set that projectile down the muzzle or down the barrel and out the muzzle. So it makes sense that they would ultimately extend the upper receiver, beefen up this part right here, and then have a proprietary locking system for that rail to lock onto. It is M-lock, which is nice and long enough. I wouldn't mind if it was a little bit longer, but with what we get, I'm really happy about it. So ultimately, it's very durable. Is it more durable than the RIS-2 or R3 rail from Daniel? The rail itself? No, I don't think so. However, the upper receiver being the way it's designed, yeah, that's, that's pretty tough. And there is an argument to be made in favor of LMT with their monolithic design where the upper receiver and the rail are actually all one piece of metal, but I don't have an LMT here in front of me for some freaking reason. Anyway, what else is monolithic? Actually, the bolt carrier group. If I were to strip this guy out and bring you this, it's almost like we have another one of these DIs laying around. This, the gas key doesn't require any staking, which is pretty interesting. The bolt carrier group itself is pretty much all one piece that you see there. It's, it's very interesting and is something that I think is pretty neat. They do have the actual gas key that does interact with the uh, gas tube locked in there, and they even have it marked uh, there's actually an indention. There's a seal here and everything to make sure that nothing is rotating out of place. Again, the quality control is just on point with LWRCI and I think they do a great job. The barrel itself, you guys are going to know it's got that cool fluting, that twisted fluting that they have on it here. That is Cold Hammer Forged by LWRCI and I think, again, they do an excellent job with that as far as all the shooting that I have done. The pistol grip alone also is another piece of furniture that I really appreciate. Just something that they've paid a little bit of attention to. Notice the trigger guard and how that lines up. That's also enlarged. It's polymer to save a little bit of weight. Not that big of a deal. But overall, the combination of the two makes this a very ergonomic and comfortable grip. So something that also really excites me. So overall, the price point on this guy too is something I think you guys are going to like as well, which again makes it really difficult to beat, which is why it's my number one, because it has everything I want, mostly. So what do you guys think? Do you think I'm completely out of my mind, off the rails when it comes to this list for 2023? Is there something, someone perhaps, some manufacturer that I have completely overlooked? Let me know down in the comments section. And, well, tag them, right? I mean, if you find this all over social media and whatnot, tag them. Let them know, wow, Clint obviously needs to expand his horizons a little bit and discover you guys. Who is you guys? Let me know down in the comments there. And do you agree with the list? Disagree? Should it be in a different order? Should I add? Should I take away? Favorites? Least favorites? Let me know, and we'll leave it off there. I'm going to go to mention cfcontest.com one more time because this gun will never be there. But you might find something that's really, really similar to it or something else very soon. So, you know, cfcontest.com. And with that being said, I am out of all these different ARs that we have right now. I'm out of options. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm out of numbers. Guys, as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. We'll see you next time at Classic Firearms.